welcome again to our Lent series. It is day 45, Good Friday, a day of fasting and abstinence. Good Friday is the most somber day of the Christian year. It is a day our Savior died for us, a day we were redeemed from our sins by the voluntary death of God himself at the hands of man. We would like to know more about Good Friday under the following subtitles. 1. Why is this day called Good Friday? Today is called Good Friday, an alternative of holy, while it is a dark day when Jesus died. Because though there is death of Jesus, there is more of good in the death of Jesus and no evil in it. It's good because it is the day Christ showed his great love for man and purchased for him every blessing, as St. Paul tells us. However, some argue that the origin of the designation good is not based on the fact that something very good, that is our redemption, happened on this day. That's not where the name comes from, they argue. The historical origins of the good in Good Friday remain unclear. Some believe that it developed from the older name, God's Friday. And also some etymologists believe that the term good is an archaic form of holy. Thus, Good Friday would have come from Holy Friday, the same we have Holy Thursday and Holy Saturday. Regardless of these debates on the name and term good in Good Friday, it is entirely appropriate because Jesus' suffering, terrible as it was, had to happen for us to receive the joy of Easter. As the saying normally goes, there is no Easter without Good Friday. The cross and the resurrection are decisive turning points in the history of the church. Number two, what happened on the first Good Friday? Quite a number of things happened. During the night that led to Good Friday, that is Holy Thursday night, Jesus had been arrested and taken before the high priests, Annas and Caiaphas. It is during this time that Peter denied him. According to the Gospels, Jesus was taken before Pilate in the morning of Good Friday. He was then sent to Herod, then returned to Pilate, was mocked and beaten, saw Barabbas released in his stead, was crowned with thorns, was condemned to death, carried the crushing burden of his cross, told the weeping women what would happen in the future, was crucified between the two thieves, forgave those who crucified him, entrusted the Virgin Mary to the beloved disciple, assured the good thief of his salvation, said his famous seven last words, cried out aloud, and died. In addition, there was darkness over the land, there was an earthquake, the veil of the temple was torn into two. Many saints of the Old Testament period were raised. A soldier pierced Christ's side and blood and water flowed out. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. He was buried in Joseph's own tomb. A guard was set over the tomb. All Jesus' friends and family grieved at his death. The Gospel accounts of the events of Good Friday can be found in Matthew chapter 27, verse 1 to 66, Mark chapter 15, verse 1 to 47, Luke chapter 23, verse 1 to 56, and John chapter 18 verse 28 to chapter 19, verse 42. Number three, how do we celebrate Good Friday today?
delay. According to the main document governing the celebrations connected with Easter, Pas Charles Solemnitatis, number 58, on this day, when Christ our Passover was sacrificed, the church meditates on the passion of her Lord and spouse, adores the cross, commemorates her origin from the side of Christ asleep on the cross, and intercedes for the salvation of the whole world. Number four, are fasting and abstinence required on Good Friday? Yes. Pastoris Solemnitatis number 60 notes, Good Friday is a day of penance to be observed as of obligation in the whole church and indeed through abstinence and fasting. Number five, are the sacraments celebrated on Good Friday? For the most part, no. Good Friday is the only day of the year on which the celebration of Mass is strictly forbidden. Pastoris Solemnitatis number 59 notes, On this day, in accordance with the ancient tradition, the Church does not celebrate the Eucharist. Holy Communion is only distributed to the faithful during the celebration of the Lord's Passion alone, though it may be brought at any time of the day to the sick who cannot take part in the celebration. Number 61 notes, that all celebration of the sacraments on this day is strictly prohibited except for the sacraments of penance and anointing of the sick. Funerals are to be celebrated without singing, music, or the tolling of bells. Baptism in danger of death is also permitted. Number six, what liturgical celebrations occur on this day? The principal one is known as the celebration of the Lord's Passion, which includes liturgy of the word, solemn intercessions, the adoration of the cross, and finally, a communion service using the hosts already consecrated. Pastelis Solemnitatis number 63 notes, the celebration of the Lord's Passion is to take place in the afternoon at about 3 o'clock. The time will be chosen which seems most appropriate for the pastoral reasons in order to allow the people to assemble more easily, for instance, shortly after midday or in the evening late, however, not later than 9 o'clock. Number 7. How is the cross venerated. Pascharis Solemnitatis number 68 notes, for the veneration of the cross, let a cross be used that is of appropriate size and beauty, and let one of the forms of this rite, as found in the Roman Missal, be followed. The rite should be carried out with a splendor worthy of the mystery of our salvation both the invitation pronounced at the unveiling of the cross and the people's response should be made in song, and a period of respectful silence is to be observed after each act of veneration, while the celebrant still standing and holding the raised cross. Number 69 notes that the cross is to be presented to each of the faithful individually for the adoration, since the personal adoration of the cross is the most important feature of this celebration. Only when associated by the large numbers of the faithful present should the rite of veneration be met simultaneously by all present. Only one cross should be used for the veneration as this contributes to the full symbolism of the rite. During the veneration of the cross, the unfolds reproaches and hymns should be sung, so that the history of salvation be commemorated through song. 
Other appropriate songs may also be sung. Number eight, what happens after the celebration of the Lord's Passion? Pas Charles Solemnitatis number 71 notes. After the celebration, the altar is stripped. The cross, however, remains with the four candles. An appropriate place, for example, the chapel of repose used for the reservation of the Eucharist on Monday Thursday can be prepared within the church. And there, the Lord's cross is placed so that the faithful may venerate and kiss it and spend some time in meditation. Number nine. Are other devotions appropriate to Good Friday? Pastoral Solemnitatis number 72 notes, devotions such as the Way of the Cross, processions of the Passion, and commemorations of sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary are not for pastoral reasons to be neglected. The texts and songs used, however, should be adapted to the spirit of the liturgy of this day. Such devotions should be assigned to a time of the day that makes it quite clear that the liturgical celebration, by its very nature, far surpasses them in importance. I wish you a blessed Good Friday. Don't forget to fast and abstain from meat. And also today, we start the Divine Mercy Novena. This Novena will go up to Saturday before we celebrate the Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us join hands to pray for the mercy of God over the world that is full of sin and also negligence of God. Thank you very much.